What's up, guys? What's up, cards? What's up, CW? I changed up the little screen a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to be using something like this for my main videos when I do normal videos. I kind of like it. How's everyone doing on this uh, Wednesday, middle of the week? Can you guys hear me okay? Everybody hear me okay? It was YouTube's telling me uh, that my audio was weird. I think it's because I had my mic muted. Thanks, CW. I've been playing around with it, trying to come up with different things. Spice it up a little bit instead of just a boring camera or whatever. Thank you, guys. What's up, Bill, JC, Nats man? I uh, I wanted to put that up um, early, um, so I wasn't just sitting here talking to myself and let some people come in here, um, because this is a pretty cool announcement I have. Um, Saturday night when I was streaming, some guys had some questions regarding a few things. I actually got to talk to a rep today. And um, got some pretty positive uh, information from SGC. <clears throat> What's up, Connor? You guys like the uh, the little card scrolling there? I just put up some of them. I use the um, the scan thing that they have. And um, just posted some of the cards that I had out of my last group submission. By the way, I, I got to play around with the chat. Um, the chat box I had up. That's another reason I changed this. That chat box, I noticed um, when I went back and rewatched the video. It looked good for me on my screen. But then when I went and watched the video, I noticed you couldn't read any of the chat. So... I gotta figure out how to make that work out. Um, that way, if people just want to sit back and watch the the live video after it's done and see what people were talking about and stuff, that'll be on there. But I gotta figure out why it was so blurred and you couldn't see anything. What feeling did you have, CW? Give me one second, guys. I'll be right back. I just did a big no-no and spilled a drink, and I may have messed up a couple of cards I wanted to send in. Don't have drinks around your cards.
Yeah, big party foul, Bill. Man. I think they're all okay. I think it only got on cases, but... For anyone that collects uh, basketball, it was LeBron. Not good. But I think it's just on the ass out of some cases, so I'm all out. I'm good. Live lessons with bobbles and ball cards. Don't have drinks around your cards. Alright, looks like we got a good group here. Um, Alright, so anyway, there were some questions come up on Saturday when I did the live, screen, uh, live stream. One question was regarding uh, um, group submissions. And um, Nats man was in here and he confirmed uh, the pricing right now for a bulk submission, there's not a gap to allow group submissions. I have been thinking about it the past couple days before I got to talk to a rep from uh, SGC. Um, and one idea I had came up with was to uh, give them an idea of possibly, instead of upping the price for a 20-day submission, um, hang on one second here, let me pop this out so I can see what you guys are talking about. Um, instead of doing uh, an increased price on 20-day submission, Asking if they would be willing to go to maybe a 15-day submission if they could um, come through with that. And I'll show you guys right here. Um, let, me, let me bump over here. My other screen. Okay, here we go. So, here's services and pricing. And right here, for 15 day, it's $15 a card. So I was talking to them to see if maybe they could do a little bit of leeway and if they could pull through on a 15 day sub to um, possibly give some leeway for a group uh, host someone who hosts the group submissions, maybe at like $8 or even $10. And um, then that person could charge, say, $12. Now, this would only work if people were okay with the five business day, you know, five less business days. <clears throat> I really like how they offer the $10 rate. Um, I think that that fits for a lot of collectors if they only have a couple cards and if they're willing to wait the 20 day turnaround. Um, but if they could do it on a 15 day or even, I think they have a 10 day, but I don't see it on here. Um, if they could even do it on a 10 day rate and then lower the price down for a host, that would save people in a group format money per card on their end and it would also have enough um, play for a host to be able to make uh, or be compensated for their time and return shipping. Because right now that would be where the key, you know, when, if, if like right now, if I was the host, I would not be able to turn in a group submission for under $10. There's just no way, um, you know, if somebody sent me, say, three cards and, 
even if I charge them $10, I'm not going to have enough extra from what I would be paying to what they would pay on their own to constitute time, effort, and me returning the cards back to them, let alone the responsibility, um, the insurance, you know, all that stuff of somebody's cards. So they would have to go down and be able to accommodate a 10 or a 15 day even um, to make it beneficial. I don't see them being able to drop the group prices lower because at that point, you know, they obviously have to pay employees. They have, you know, probably um, lease for the building that they run, electric, um, supplies for the cases, all that stuff. And unless they got to a massive market to where they were, you know, turning tons and tons and tons of cards regularly, I don't know that they could go much lower on their group fees. So I get that what the or a bulk fee. I, I get why they charge what they do on bulk um, compared to the base price of ten dollars because they do have to make money in there. I don't know how much they pay their graders, but I would assume that most of them have been with that company for a long time. Um, and so with that, they're going to discuss that. Um, and then supposed to, you know, possibly touch back base with me to see if there's some way that we could work into a, a quicker turnaround that would normally cost like a, someone with just a couple cards more than if they were to do it with a group submitter. So that's that's topic number one. Um and, and that's actually good news that they were even willing to consider that. Topic number two. Um, I've had people ask me about um, Canada. There's a lot of people, a lot of collectors in Canada. And right now, the big holdup is... The shipping rates, you know, obviously international shipping costs a lot more. So, yes, Brad, they do have a 20 day rate. 20 day is $10 a card. Um, so, I've had people reach out to me from Canada. And, you know, obviously the Canadian dollar is worth a lot less than the American dollar in the conversion rate. So, for them to be able to submit... It, it costs them a lot of money. And then they have the higher shipping because, you know, the international shipping fees. So realistically, uh, the Canadian market is kind of in a stranglehold with they pretty much can only, like, make any money if they want to sell cards by selling raw. Um, because by the time they pay grading fees and by the time they pay shipping and all that other mess, they're basically going to be at the same level if they were to sell their cards raw. I put across an idea to him. The logistics of it would be um, something that would definitely be need to figure out. There would be um, a third company or a third party involved. To make this happen, um, it also would probably be after the coronavirus was to settle down or, you know, borders where it'd be able to be opened back up and things like that. But the idea I brought across to him was to set up a P.O. box in Canada right across the border or, you know, in a location close to an American Canadian border. From that, Hire a courier service that is based in New York or somewhere like that that has easy access to cross the border. The Canadian people could then submit their cards and ship them to a Canadian P.O. box. The courier, you know, obviously it would be a little bit more turnaround time for a Canadian, but I think it could benefit them. But maybe once a week, the courier goes across the border to the P.O. box, 
gets the orders that have been shipped there, make sure that the post office is cool with, you know, holding packages or whatever, bring them back across over to the States, ship them, the courier would ship, then ship them to SGC. Once SGC is done, have them ship it back to the courier. The courier would cross back over into Canada and then distribute the packages to all the international customers. I think that would be the best way to help out the international market. Right now, they have two grading companies that I know of. It's a company called MNT and a company called KSA. Um, from everything I've heard, and this is from Canadian collectors, they are not happy with those two companies at all. Those companies also, if you ever find MNT or KSA graded cards, they do not bring a lot of value. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know if many people have even heard of them. I've only heard of them because I do look at hockey cards sometimes. I've gotten into hockey cards a little bit. Um, so I have seen the grades on eBay. And I'll tell you, you, you could pick up a KSA or an MNT way cheaper than, you know... They, I would compare them to like a GMA rate. Um, they're very undervalued. And their prices are also a lot higher. Um, they do... Uh, M&T has a, a grading system sort of like BGS where they give subgrades. I've heard people say they're almost just like BGS where it's impossible to get a, a pristine. So they are looking in the Canadian market for another source. Um... So with that, um, it's something that they're going to look at logistically and see, explore options to see if there's a possible way to help out our northern neighbors to maybe get them more involved with the graded card market as well. Um, but in a way that is profitable, it also would help all of us that collect SGC because that would just mean more cards moving into the market that are SGC graded. Um, something I do want to stress, um, I talk a lot about SGC. I am exclusively grading with SGC now. And I even told um, the rep today, I love SGC. I love their customer service. I love everything about the company. But I don't want to tell people, you know, if they choose or if they prefer PSA because of a case or whatever, I think it would be smart for people to use all three companies. The more of a level market we have with three companies, the more it benefits everybody. It could possibly help PSA not be so backed up. You know, um... Beckett prices might could move up a little bit more for a 9.5, a John Mint. Um, and then obviously SGC is getting into the market and they're coming on strong, which is great news. You know, I always, always look at it as, you know, you got three major car manufacturers. You got Ford, Chevy, and Dodge. If everybody bought Ford and said, well, Ford's the only one, then what use would it be for Chevy and Dodge to be in existence? Um, you know, just about everything that you have, um, like as far as product wise, you have multiple options and the more level of a playing field, those options are the more it benefits everybody. Us as SGC graders could benefit by the prices, you know, going into a level field. BGS people could get more return on their nine fives. Um, and then obviously PSA, that market would kind of smooth out and they, the, S, their, the PSA graders could possibly benefit because they wouldn't be so backed up. That would be a huge advantage for everybody. Um, everything right now too, as far as pricing that I've been watching... Basketball seems to be the largest gap between a PSA 10 and an SGC 10. And I think a lot of that goes back to your larger YouTubers and, you know, um, influencers. I'll, I'll call them influencers. 
um, your investor perspectives, they talk about PSA. Basically, it's PSA or nothing. So you have a lot of new faces in the basketball market. You have a lot of stock investors, stock traders, you know, I'll call them people with deep pockets. They're financially capable of going and buying up PSA at a premium price. What that does is then they kind of get into a war and those prices just keep steadily climbing. There's also more PSA in the market than BGS or SGC. So you're going to see more and more cards sold of a PSA than you are an SGC. I think with time and, you know, maybe some people becoming more knowledgeable with the hobby and the prices and the structure and everything, I think that could sort of kind of close the gap a little bit. Um, but for right now, that, and that's just my my thought on it. Um, I think it's a lot of the new faces, the people that aren't aware that there's even really other companies that are legit. They think PSA is the only company around. And um, these people are wealthy and they they think that they're about making a quick dollar or, you know, turning a profit. And they think that unless they buy PSA, they won't be able to turn a profit. So, and that's in the basketball market. Baseball... SGC actually has more of a following in baseball because the vintage people for baseball have, you know, they've graded SGC for a while now. So they are familiar with the company. They know they're a good grading company. They know they're trusted. <coughs> Excuse me. They, they've bought an SGC card before or they've graded with SGC for, before. And so it's easier for baseball to transfer into the SGC market than it is, you know, basketball. Um, Canada, with, like I was discussing, hockey, I've been grading hockey cards with SGC. That market also doesn't recognize SGC a lot because the Canadians are the big hockey market and they haven't been grading with SGC, so they're not as familiar as well. So once more cards get in the market, once there's more talk like we've been all been doing, um then I think the prices will start to smooth out. So, let me look over here and see what questions we got right now before I get into everything else. Yes, Gentry, they, they kind of have a flat rate on there, and then I, I think it, it's like, uh, let's see. I'm going to actually go into the submission form here in a little bit. But um, I have a third thing to discuss with you guys. This was brought up in my live stream the other night. I first want to say thank you to everyone that has reached out to me. Thank you to everyone that supported the channel. Those of you that have subscribed. Um, I really appreciate this. And I also want to, you know, just say this channel, my Reddit posts, um, chatting, whether it's with Nats Man until 2 o'clock in the morning about cards or whatever. Um, all that stuff is just, it, I'm strictly having fun with this and I really enjoy helping people. And if I can help you guys, I'm going to be as honest, transparent, and straightforward. If I can answer your questions, I'm going to answer them. If I can't, I'm going to try to find an answer. Saturday night, the questions that were brought up, I cannot answer them without speaking to a representative. I promised you guys that were on that I would try to get you some answers. That's what this video is about. But my third thing, and this is awesome, Bobbles and Ball Cards now has a code. I just popped it up on the screen. Now, the email said... And obviously, I haven't tried the code. Um, it said your first order. So unfortunately, those that have sent an order with SGC, I am not 100% if this will work. You're more than welcome to try it. 
But right now, if you're interested in SGC, if you're watching this video because you've seen my posts or you've watched my videos before and you're interested in sending your first order and you just want to try them out, it's not a lot, but it's 10% off your first order with SGC using promo code BOBBLES10 at checkout. So, you know, if you send five cards at a 20-day rate, you know, that would be $50, take 10% off, you're going to save five bucks, you know, and obviously the more you send, the more you're going to save. Um, this is, you know, it's small, but it's to help those, and a lot of people have asked me and have been interested in it. So there was a question the other night about a promo code. Um, I did talk to them, and this is the customer service, man. They, they've seen me on Instagram and everything. They know that, um, that I've been sending my bulk orders. They know that, I, I really, uh, that I'm really enjoying their company and that I'm trying to help people out and trying to send more customers their way. So this is a thank you to all of you guys. Um, and if you have not graded with them yet, please feel free to use this code at checkout. It, again, it's Bobbles10. It's for 10% off your first order. Those that have already graded, like I said, the email stated your first order. Um, you're more than welcome to try it. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, I do apologize for that. Um, but, you know, at least this is something and at least this can also help new people that want to try SGC out. Um, please share it with your friends, uh, share the channel with your friends if you want. Um, but anyway, that was my three things that I discussed with them today. Crispy, there was no minimum amount. The email only said 10% off your first order. So, I mean, if you send a $10 order, you, you, you're only going to save a dollar, but, um, you know, it's, it's 10% off. Um, let me go over here real quick, move this chat over here so I can see it. Give me one second guys, I'm gonna try to set this up to where I can show you guys some. Alright, I'm gonna bring this up. Now, for anyone that has not ever submitted with SGC before I get a lot of questions about the submission um, a lot of people say their their submission form is very easy to use um, but anyway what you want to do is you want to log into your account or make an account if you haven't already and then here is their home page and on here you can go on and see online submission item verification pop reports and card registry do not work yet they are working on that so give them time um that would that's probably really really hard to set up but they have stated many times they're working on a pop report um i think if they get this going it could boost boost their company even more because a lot of people love pop reports um, but anyway, go in here to start submission. It's going to bring you the, this up right here, okay? What you're going to do is click on card grading. Very simple setup. I mean, it, it is basic. But now, uh, let me think. I need to try to find a card. Uh, let's see. Let me go with this one. Okay, if I was to type this in, one thing, if they haven't um, graded a card before, when you do this search, let's see, when you do this search, okay, this is John Morant checkerboard from this year's Optic. I actually was going to send one to them because I had one. Um, I ended up selling it raw to actually the guy that runs the store at Blowout. Um, see here where it says, I don't see my card click here to add your card what you'll do then is you'll click this okay this will bring your card up 
type in what you feel the best description for the card is. As you noticed here, I did this one as 2019 Donruss Optic, the card number 168, John Morant, and then the parallel name, Checkerboard. So if the card doesn't, like if, if it's not in their system, hit click here to add your card. And then right here, you'll just put what you think the declared value is. Now, obviously, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to say $100 just, just, just as an example thing. This card's way more than $100, but I'm going to do $100, okay? Encapsulate if altered. Now, this box, you can, you can select that, unselect it, whichever you want. Okay, what this means is if they deem your card as possibly being altered, they will still encapsulate it and they will put it as being authentic altered. Okay, um, if it's an oversized item, a jumbo card or something like that, you'd want to click this item. I'm going to go ahead and just go through some of this here. Um, you'll select your service, raw card grading. There's also crossovers if you're sending from another company, um, just a review. If you have a bad, you know, case or something like that, you can do reholder service, but we want to do card grading. Right here, this drop down right here, you can say what the minimum grade is that you want. Not, not that they're going to give that to you, but say I say, well, don't grade it if it's not a nine or better. I would select that. If they deem the card as being an eight, you know, eight and a half, whatever, they won't grade it. That way, th that's a, this is a big thing because there's so many people that crack cases because they're not happy with their grade. If they wanted a specific grade or if they didn't want the card if it was an eight, all they have to do is select this. Then they won't grade it. It's simple. A little click and it's simple. It, it's saying what your minimum grade is. So anyway, for our, for these purposes, I'm going to just do, um, I'm going to go back to that. This means whatever the grade is, put that there. Um, John, I, I have not graded any thicker cards. Um, I don't think that they upcharge. I think it's only the height and width. I don't think they upcharge for thicker, um... I don't, I don't see that on here anywhere. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to next. Oh, wait, actually, I want to go back real quick. One thing, one thing that I have also discussed with them um, that I wish they would improve on, there's no quantity here. Like when I, su when I submitted... Um, my first bulk order, I had 10 Juan Sotos. I had to go in and each time click the card over and over and over. And that does get kind of, you know, it gets kind of confusing because you have to scroll back and, um, you know, count how many you've done. That way you don't put a submission in for 11 and you have 10 or you do 9 and you have 10, whatever. Um, Jordan, they actually do have thicker cases. People do grade thick uh, patch cards and all that stuff. I don't know how thick they go, but they do have thicker cases. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you guys this here. We're going to go ahead and add another John Morant. I'm going to click it, add to card. See, now this will give me a second one on here. That's one thing with the submission side. I wish that you could just do a, like a drop down box and how many of the quantity is. Um... Hendog SGC is a grading company. They have actually been around longer than BGS. They, the first company to ever come out was PSA, then SGC, and then BGS. Between the three main companies, SGC has actually been around the second longest. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add a second one. We're gonna do another 100 on the value, and then we're gonna go next. Now here is where you can do your your print your different services. Now, if you see, this is what I was talking about. They do have a 10 day. It doesn't show it in the pricing section, but.
but they do have a 10 day. It's a $28 fee for 10 days. So it's $14 per card. 15 day is $13 per card. And then 20 day is $10 per card. For seven days, which they put here recommended, it's $18 per card. You can't even get standard economy service with PSA for $18 per card. Let's be real. This is a seven day service for 18 bucks per card. Okay. Um, so anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna use this as, you know, um, just examples. We're gonna do seven days. So my fees right now are $36. Now go ahead and go next. Here's my address. Um, we're going to do priority mail and get it off of here. Okay. Here's where the promo code would come in. This right here. Promo code. What you want to do here, this is where you would type in the promo code. Okay. And hit apply. Look at this. Okay, guys, this is good. See that right there? He said first time order, but it worked. I've submitted with them before, and it's letting me use the promo code. So, 10% off your order with using code BOBBLES10. I, that, that's another reason I wanted to show you guys this, to show you this isn't me making something up. This is a legit code. And there you can see it. Oh, my card shell is blocking the screen. I apologize. Thank you for telling me that, JC. Hang on. Bam, how about that? Is that better? Thank you, JC. I didn't even realize I'm sitting here talking. Okay, you can see here, I put in the promo code. Bobbles 10, hit apply, promo discount, $3.60, off of $36, okay? So, it does, it, it apparently looks like it does work, um, even if you have submitted with them before, because I have submitted. Um, and there you guys can see, this is a legit code, I'm not making anything up, I'm not trying to sound all fancy smancy, it does work. And anybody is more than welcome to use this code. Um, now, I want to show you guys something else. There was no deadline. He did not give me a deadline or anything. He emailed me this I just uh, talked to him this evening, roughly around 3 o'clock. He emailed me around 6 with the code after he got it set up and everything. And... So I wanted to share that with you guys. There was nothing in the email regarding a deadline or anything like that. Hendog, if you're worried about their prices, I'm going to tell you this. You're going to pay more to have a BGS card graded. And an SGC-10 will outsell a BGS-9.5. So, and then if you get a PSA-9, but an SGC-9.5... The SGC 9.5 will outsell a PSA 9. So, if you're worried about the pricing, there is absolutely nothing to worry about. I think all of the companies eventually are going to start evening out. So, don't worry about the pricing. I wouldn't be sending 100 plus cards at a time if they weren't selling. Because what I do is I get my cards back, I sell them, I send my next order. I use the money from selling the cards to send my next order. It took me, I think, 12 cards out of my, out of my first order to have enough, which was almost $1,000, to send my next order. 12 cards out of a 110 card order, I had enough to send my next order. So prices are good. Prices are strong. So... Anyway, guys, you can see here the promo code. Uh, once again, I'll show you the discount does work. Um, now, I had someone message me. They didn't want to use PayPal. They wanted to use their credit card or debit card. Um, I'm not sure which. Um, 
but they kept seeing that there's only PayPal here. So they got concerned with that. I'm going to show you real quick. If you click the PayPal button, okay, it's going to take you to PayPal. Now, right here, click this pay with debit or credit card. If you don't want to use PayPal, you can do a guest checkout, okay? This guest checkout here, you put in all your information, and then you don't have to actually use PayPal or have a PayPal account. You can use PayPal guest, so you don't need to use an actual PayPal account. But once you fill all this in, your order is on the way, or your order is in their system. Now, what I suggest doing from there is print out your submission form, make two copies. Keep one for your record and keep one to, to enclose in the box with your order. That way when they get it, they can open it, have the paper, go through everything and see your order. Okay? Um, when you package your cards, let me show you this real quick. Take this off of here. All right. When you package your cards, I really suggest using card savers, okay? Or these Ultra Pros, the card savers, whatever. I put them in order for the way I fill out the submission form. And then take... I use these little thin rubber bands and I put cardboard around my cards and then take a rubber band this way and a rubber band this way. After that, wrap them in bubble wrap and then usually you can fit them in like a priority mail, the pre-rate boxes or whatever. And then they'll get to them in you know two to three days. Everything is protected and you're good to go, okay? What are you, what are you guys talking about? Uh, they're only accepting mail-in subs right now. Or third-party grading. I missed some questions here, I guess. Or some, some talk. But anyway, um, so that is the steps to the submission form. Um, again, print out two copies, keep one for yourself, and then include one with your package, protect your cards, you know, bandage them, or uh, not bandage, um, rubber band them up, make sure they have some good cardboard around them, that way it's not, the rubber band's not going to pull the cards in or anything, and then... Go ahead and get them in a box. I put bubble wrap and everything in there. If you have multiple that you uh, rubber band up, I always number them one and two that way, or three, how many ever you have. That way when they get to submission form, everything is in order. They know this is package one, this is two, this is three. And then you can go ahead and um, get those on the way. Um, is there any questions regarding the submission form? That's awesome, Bill. Yeah, see, uh, like I said, it was, I, the code works. I wasn't just um, making this code up to get you guys to tune in to me. I wanted to share this with you. Um, the question was asked the other night. I wanted to um, reach out and promise, like, you know, like I told you guys I would. I didn't know if I could get anything. And again, it's only 10%. But, um, hey, 10% is better than, better than nothing. Um, and I did promise you guys that I would, you know, reach out to them, see what I could do. So I'm very happy that they were willing to work with me on that and, um, get me a code for all of you guys that have been, you know, tuning in, chatting with me, giving me good feedback on my channel, um, you know, discussing SGC, 
um, that sort of thing. For the people on Reddit that have reached out to me, there's been a lot of people on Reddit reach out to me, and I try to help everybody as much as possible. I do get in arguments sometimes with people on there that just discount SGC. They're given false information. I... I am trying to help everybody, and like again, I'll say it, I'm transparent with you guys. I'm going to be truthful with you. If I tell you I'm going to do something, like the giveaway or the promo code, which, by the way, um, where is he at? John Voice. John Voice, I heard that you got your package today. John was the winner of the giveaway on Saturday. Um, I, I heard he, my wife told me he got his package today. So that's great news. I'm glad it got there. I told you I was going to send it out Monday. Today's Wednesday. He got his package. Um, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do my best to do it. If I give you guys information, I'm going to try to give you the best information I can. Um, I'm going to try to give you knowledgeable information. I'm not just going to throw stuff at you to make me sound like I know, you know, I'm smart or whatever. Um, I'm going to be honest. There's some other guys that have actually taken information that I gave them, used it on their channel, and didn't even accredit me. And that did bother me. I'm not going to call anybody out um, by name. Um, some people I have discussed with it because it did upset me pretty bad. Um, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I give you guys shout-outs. This the little shout-out bar, you know, up at the top of the screen. I'm going to try to flip that up, you know, every so often. That way everybody gets a shout-out. Um... You know, I I just want everybody to uh, to have fun with this hobby, and um, you know, and, and if I'm wrong, call me out on it. You know, I'm not I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. I'm not 100% perfect, but I'm going to try to give you guys information that is helpful, um, and just little benefits like that. You know, I, they could have told me no. They're you know they could have said no. You you're nobody, you know, we got to make our money, we can't give you a discount code for your fans or your subscribers or people that talk to you, but they're not like that, SCC is a very good company, they know that I have been sending people their way, um, and all that, so, JC, as far as serial number cards, let me, uh, let me get one real quick and I'll show you something, SGC is awesome, um, I'm going to show you a card real quick to give an example. Let me find it here. Look at this. When SGC does the grading, no other company does this. Do you see this right here? This 926 of 2019. Look at this. 926 of 2019. They put the actual serial number on the front of the slab. No other company does that. This is such a nice touch. That way you don't have to sit there. If you got this card displayed or something in a frame or in a case or something, then bam, you know what the serial number is right there. So there's no question about it. I love that about them. My thoughts on inventorying, Connor, that is something that I had started trying to do, and the only thing, hang on, I'll, um, give me one second, I'll show you how I inventory. Um, I only have one thing inventoried right now, because I have so many cards that I'm trying to inventory, but... Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Yeah, right here. What I use is uh, Google Sheets for inventorying. Um, and I'll show you guys real quick. Here is my inventory for... This is Young Guns, just from hockey. These are all of the Young Guns I have. Um, accumulated in a short period of time. Um, these prices over here, I started looking them up on eBay raw prices. That way it gives me an easy reference to, um, 
when I go to submit of which ones I want to uh, go ahead and submit all these dollar ones I'm just holding them back um, but like you know the seven fifth well those are jumbos but anything like this you know ten dollars or whatever I go ahead and um, submit those in but yeah it takes a lot of time I mean this is only my young guns and as you can see there's 383 rows there so it takes a long time to do inventory that's the only thing that me and my wife have actually sat down in inventory is um our young guns Let's see here. Trying to see if I've missed anybody's questions. Um, Chris P, I'm going to tell you, you have nothing to worry about, man. Um, if there was one company that I would trust, it's SGC. And that is because I actually... Um, I send my cards directly to my rep that I spoke with to set up my bulk order. Um, I make a I make a file or um, a spreadsheet just showing what is in my order, and then I send him my cards. I'm gonna tell you, there is nothing to worry about. Um, if you sat down and watched my um, first result or my first order um, that I got back. Um, there's nothing to worry about. Every card I sent there came back and with the amount of good grades I got back, which I do take care of my cards, um, unless I spill a drink on live camera accidentally, um, which I'm hoping all the cards are good. But anyway, um, yeah, everything came back. The grades were good. Um, I, I completely trust them. Fred, uh, my sales on Young Guns have actually been slow. And I'm going to tell you why. I've only ever made like two transactions to Canada. And one of them cost me 40 bucks to ship up there because it was a $400 sale. And I wanted to make sure I had tracking. And my post office told me in order to get full tracking, I had to pay for International Express. And that cost me $40. Right now, I've, I've sold three Young Guns um, for $350. Uh, they were all 310s in SGC. Um, and I did make a deal with a guy on those to send those to Canada. And I found I could send those for $17. bucks. i am currently trying to figure out um, how to um, set my eBay up to allow Canadian sales and set my shipping rates right. That way I'm not losing too much money on the shipping cost. I have had a lot of interest in them. Um, they have a lot of watchers, um, but the sales just haven't been there because I only offer um, United States shipping right now. Am I ever going to do a group break? Um, I'm going to be honest, Connor, I am friends with a, actually, they're probably the largest group breaker that is in the industry. They do a lot of high-end group breaks. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm not going to say no, but I'm going to say probably not. Another reason is me and my wife enjoy ripping wax. We honestly, we opened three cases Friday night. We opened two cases of hockey and a case of a uh, uh, tops 19 tops update. Um, it's so much fun opening cards with her, and it's how we get most of the cards that we send in. I don't buy a whole lot raw, I will here and there, um, especially if it's a parallel like the purple Tommy Edmund that I can't get my hands on without purchasing it raw. Um, Outside of that, most of the stuff that we submit, we pull ourselves. So because of that, I don't know that I would ever do group breaks because 
it'd be kind of hard to, I, it, it's fun opening the cards with my wife and actually keeping them and being, us being able to grade them. Um, but I won't say no, I'll just say not, there's no plans at this time. That it, That isn't really what this channel is about anyway, this is more of, um, you know, information and helping you guys out and just stuff like that. Um, yes, Andy is awesome. Um, my contact is actually Peter. I have not spoken with Tyler, I don't think. But Andy's actually who I spoke with this evening. Peter has been slam busy. And, um, he actually re reached out to Andy and asked Andy to, um, get back with me. Natsan, um, is it better to get a case? Personally, I say Yes. But that also depends on what product you're thinking about getting a case of. The reason I say that is most of the time, there'll be one box, maybe two, three boxes that are really good out of a case. And if you only buy like one box, you don't know if you're getting that good box. With a case, you know you're getting everything in the case. Like that, that case of update we ripped the other night. I pulled a Vlad Auto, pulled this, pulled a Keston Hira Gold, pulled um, the Keston Hira Another Variation, pulled Chris Paddock Gold, pulled, um, I, I can't even tell you, it was like almost every decent name in the product, except for like Vlad, um, might have been one or two other guys. But almost, we pulled like, I think it was 14 rookie golds. And they weren't the debuts either. Um, they were the true rookies. And, you know, those cards, you know, you buy the case, I send those in and get graded. You know, the Keston could potentially be a two to $300 card or more. I know um, a Vlad and PSA sold for 400 bucks. So I'm going to try to get at least 350 on my Vlad gold that I have. Um, so, you know, in that situation, you're pulling the cards, sending them in, get the tens back, and you can pay for the case easy, you know, but it also depends on the product and it's not going to happen every time. Um, I will say we bought a case of 2020 series one. It was a fun rip, but I wasn't impressed with it. And we did buy jumbo for that. Um, I hit some decent things, but I just didn't feel like the resale value was on the car was good on like the autos and stuff like that. Um, I enjoy the base like tops and like the upper deck hockey and things like that. I feel that's where your best value is. Um, you can get the, the rookies are pretty easy to get and they have a good potential resale value. <clears throat> All right, guys, is there any other questions before I hop off of here? I really appreciate everybody that viewed in or that tuned in. Um, I was really excited to get this news out to you guys regarding possible group submission, um, possible international um, working for Canada, um, and then obviously helping you guys, you know, helping everybody out that's able to um, take that 10% off your orders. I really appreciate them and um, I appreciate you guys. I I hope, you know, I can continue to do things like this and help people out in the in the hobby and you know, hopefully I can continue giving you guys good information um, and that you guys, you know, continue to support. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, but anyway, if I'm going to give it a couple more seconds to see if anybody has any um, any more questions. And if not, I'm going to hop off of here for the night. Feel free to hit me up on Reddit or Instagram. Um, I've said it before, my Reddit name is B-L-E-N-A-T-S. -N -A -T -S, and then our Instagram is Bobbles and Ball Cards. It's all spelled out. So feel free to hit me up on there anytime. Um, always willing to help people out. Alright guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, hopefully we can do this again soon. 
And uh, everybody that wants that's been on the ropes to, to submit, go ahead and use that code. And uh, thank you for everything you guys do and all of the support. But until